Hi, my name is George and welcome to Build. At Build, we talk about the more technical details of the gadgets we build to make UAV Dude episodes possible. And today, we're going to be talking about how the Fire Shaker system works. The Fire Shaker system is very simple. It consists of two parts. The bulb, which is what's used to hold the steel wool while it is burning, and the driver circuits, which is the electronic circuitry controlling when to turn it on, off and on. Um, this video is quite long, so what I've decided to do is break this video up into sections talking about each of these parts individually. You can click on the piece to go straight to that section, or you can click the links on the description section below. The first part of this video is about the bulb. Now the bulb is really just a bespoke whisk, because a whisk is what most people use to hold the steel wool while it's burning. Um, as to why I've decided to build my own whisk instead of adapting one off the shelf, it's because I wanted an electronic ignition system. On the bulb, these two rails get a voltage applied across them. Now, I originally believed you couldn't solder to steel. Um, that would have made it impossible to get electrical connections attached to these steel rails. This is why on the bulb, to make the connection, I clamp the electrical cable with the steel wire. And as you can see here, I've actually clamped part of the rubber sheathing as well. Um, that makes the connection more secure, so it's less likely to break around that junction. All you need to make this electrical connection is the steel wire, the electrical cable, and a pair of pliers. Now, what you need to do is wrap the copper part, you know, the bit that actually conducts around the steel wire. Wrap the plastic around a bit as well so that you clamp, when you fold the steel wire down, it clamps down on it. Then you use a pair of pliers, bend the wire over like this. And then you just fold down. Come on. <laughs> and oh, like that. And then you make it, you've got strong connection there and some good contacts there. And there you have a clamp connection. Later on, of course, I discovered you can actually solder to steel. Uh, and here's proof. Well, I guess you learn something every day then, but I still recommend uh, clamping the steel wire around the rubber sheathing of the electrical cable for a more durable connection. The wooden part of this bulb here is called the base, and I've used wood because wood is fairly heat resistant and it's non-conductive, so I won't short out the rails. Um, and basically, it's just a circular wooden block with two millimeter holes drilled around the perimeter. Two millimeters because the steel wire that I'm going to put through it is two millimeters in diameter. So, because you've got 2 mil thick wire and a 2 mil size hole, it's going to be a tight fit, but that's what you want, because otherwise it will just fall out. And so it'll take a bit of convincing, once you get in, oh dear, oh, I did it too much. I should have loaded it from the other side, actually. <laughs> and then, all you need to do is just use your hands, really, bend it into the approximate shape that you want it, and close the loop and there we go something like this this is a bit undersized but you get the point <laughs> now moving on to the driver circuit now because I'm using a PWM radio the fire shaker driving circuit is connected to the radio via this RC switch here what the RC switch does is convert the PWM signal into a simple on off signal I won't go into much detail about how PWM signaling works today because there are plenty of online resources for this. But if you specifically want to hear me talk about it, I might make a video due to popular demand. So this is the electronic schematic for this driver circuit here. This voltage source represents the output from the RC switch and this voltage source represents the voltage from the battery. And the RC switch, when it's on, only puts out 5 volts, and that's, not, that's what this relay here is for. This relay takes the 5 volt signal from, from the RC switch to switch on this large 16 volt signal from the battery. And of course the current from the 16 volt battery, when it's switched on, will flow through here and through to here. Uh, this is the terminal which allows you to connect the bulb onto the circuit. Uh, flows through the bulb and comes back 
around to the ground side of the battery. Now 5 volts may have been sufficient to ignite steel wool if the 5 volt source from my quadcopter was capable of supplying high current, but unfortunately it doesn't. But even if it did, I just wanted to see all 16 volts from my 4S battery dumped onto steel wool. Uh, I was expecting to see a mini explosion of sorts when I tested this, but unfortunately it doesn't do that. This diode here is what you call a flyback diode. It is very important to put one of these near an inductive load such as a relay coil. And uh, when an RC switch applies voltage across here, the diode won't let current flow down here. So it flows down here, energizes the coil, uh, and switches on the relay. Uh, but when you switch off the voltage source here, um, if you've pay been paying attention to high school physics, you'll know that the coil will induce a voltage to fight the sudden drop in current in the circuit. And because it's very sudden, it's going to try very, very hard. So it's going to induce a very large voltage across here, and that will cause blow up components, all from uh, all the electronic components on this side. And what this diode does, of course, is actually allow a easy pathway for the voltage to flow. So the, the coil will, of course, still induce a voltage because there's a decrease in current. Uh, but then it'll go, oh, well, there's an easy path here, and it will just flow through here, and not blow up all the components, and the voltage spike is going to be much, much less. Now this begs the question of why I went through all this trouble to use a relay instead of a FET, which is also going to do the same job and is commonly used in ESCs. The truth is, is that it isn't easy to use a FET to get a 5 volt signal to drive a 16 volt signal. ESCs have something called a charge pump that manages this uh, and unfortunately that goes beyond my understanding of electronics as a software engineer. Now relays also make an audible click when it activates and that's very helpful to try and figure out what's went wrong. Uh, and as usual a lot of things went wrong and that is, well part of that was actually my fault in not designing the circuit properly. The problem is, the resistance of a blob of steel wool can vary wildly depending on how you load it. For example, when it's loaded in like this, the resistance is almost 10 ohms, which is kind of the range in which I want it to be. Right now I've got a very large blob, all compacted, and the resistance is 0.8, practically a dead short. So why is it that a piddly 9 volt battery can do the job of igniting steel wool just fine? Well it turns out that a 9 volt battery is only shorting out one strand of steel wool at a time, and if you measure the resistance of one strand, it's uh, almost 10 ohms, the range that you kind of want it to be. But if you know Ohm's law, you'll know that this minute much resistance means around 1 amp of current. Now most 9 volt batteries would struggle to give that amount of current, but it's really okay because um, the 9 volt battery will quickly short out the strand and burn it out, meaning not 1 amp has only been drawn intermittently. And secondly, uh, if you're playing around with burning steel wool, you're just sticking around anyways and you don't care about the lifespan of the battery. Given this extreme variation in resistance, the best driver circuit would have been a constant current driver. But given that I wanted to make an episode as quick as possible without having to wait 3 weeks for eBay parts, I decided to solder a 10 watt 1 ohm resistor in series with the bulb terminals. It's a quick and dirty hack that does waste a significant amount of energy, even if the steel wheel does have the correct amount of resistance. But it does ensure that if the steel wheel does end up being a dead short, only a maximum of 16 amps can flow through the circuit. The driver circuit is built using a Vero board. I gave it a deep score, then strategically put it into a vise so it snaps more predictably. After scoring down the middle of the Vero board so the two sides of the relay pins don't get short, I solder the relay on. I also built up a power connector loom so I can attach the driver circuit to the battery. This loom has both an input and an output battery connector so that I can daisy chain components at the end. Solder junctions like this are quite fragile. So I not only heat shrink this junction, but I added cable ties for good measure. That ensures that the wire bends at the right place and doesn't break. Soldering on the power loom to the Vero board is pretty straightforward, but because soldering to Vero board is generally a very messy business, give some generous pad space. Two tracks for this fairly low gauge power cable. As I showed earlier, I use bullets as the connectors for the terminal. Because the connector on the driver circuit is for an output, for safety reasons I use a female bullet. Soldering electrical cable to the driver circuit and then connecting bullets to that may have been easier, but I don't think it's anywhere near as stylish as soldering them directly to the Vero board. And as usual when you're doing home build circuits, make sure you perform a continuity test. 
you won't believe the number of times in what you believe to be a good connection turned out to be a non-connection. And with the way solder tends to spill on VeroBoard, continuously reworking the board could cause solder to remelt, shorting out tracks that were originally not shorted together. Now depending on your continuity tester, diodes can make red herrings, as they tend to short both ways. Which is the reason why I'm soldering it on after I perform the continuity check here. My right. So thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe right, and give the thumbs up. That way I know to make more build videos in the future.